Good morning and welcome to my kitchen. Today is all about strawberries. Now, Wimbledon is upon us, okay? Everyone is going mad for these little beauties. These are British strawberries. They are sweet, they are delicious. I have been waiting all year to find these in the shops. I've got two cracking recipes for you. The first one, I'm gonna make some bao buns. Now, if you haven't had bao buns before, they're these little steamed Asian buns. They are absolutely delicious. We're gonna serve them up with some halloumi and we're gonna make a delicious strawberry pims salsa to go with them. They will be amazing. Then we're going to make a delicious adult rosé wine and strawberry frappe. So frozen rosé wine, fresh British strawberries, blended up to a drink, Perfect for enjoying Wimbledon. But first, we'll get the halloumi bao buns done. So, you might think I'm a bit sort of having a bit of a funny turn with cheese and strawberries, but believe me, it works, this one. So, we're gonna start off with our salsa. Now, red onion, we're gonna chop it really, really fine. It's important that it's fine because you don't want everything to taste of onion. So the smaller you can chop it, the better. What do you think about this dish, Emily? Yeah, I'm intrigued. I yeah. I can't wait to see what it's like with strawberries. Well, we've done it with mango and yeah. peach before, haven't we? So we kind of thought the sweetness of the strawberries is going to work well with well, the saltiness just, of the I cheese. I was just about to ask, like, throughout obviously strawberries don't lose their flavour after and before summer, mm. what other fruits can you, do you use any other fruits or what would you Yeah, yeah, use? definitely. So peach, peaches when they're lovely and sweet, nectarines, mango, they all work really well. And in fact, if you're doing this out of season, um, tinned mangoes and tinned peaches and nectarines are actually pretty good for this. So don't be afraid of the tin, all right? I would rather go for tin that's ripe, sweet and delicious than buy a mango that's like that, or a peach, because it tastes of nothing. Okay, so, nice and finely chopped. Get that red onion chopped. All good salsas kind of start with these ingredients, you know. Getting your red onion in, it gives you a bit of crunch, gives you a bit of tang, works really well. Okay, so, let's get our onion into the bowl. So the, oh, no, you're right. the idea of these recipes really is, yes, Wimbledon's upon us, but it's um, strawberry themed, but um, it's great food to eat while you're watching the tennis. So I remember when I worked down at Wimbledon once, I have never hulled so many strawberries in all my life. Ah. That is all I did for two weeks when I worked down there. Oh man, it was brutal. So I've got two limes, which I'm gonna squeeze over the onions and we do this often because it really does make the red onion sort of slightly pickled, but a kind of fruity pickle rather than a vinegary pickle. Okay? I was gonna say, like, is this what a, a salsa that you kind of, you, you make and you eat fresh rather than leave Yeah, it? don't keep it, just make enough that you need because the acidity starts to wilt everything down. So, um, yeah, make enough. Good for barbecues, this. You don't, you know, it doesn't have to be with halloumi if you don't want to, it doesn't have to be in the bao buns. You could make this salsa and just serve it up with some, with whatever really. So, give that a good stir around. Make sure the onions sit in the lime juice for a couple of minutes while we take all our pims. Now, pims is the traditional drink of Wimbledon. So I thought we'd take the inspiration of that and make a salsa with it. So, we've got cucumber. Now, cucumber is full of water in the middle. So we're gonna remove the seeds. So I've cut them into quarters and then I'm just skimming out the actual watery centre bit because that's just going to dilute the flavour. Cut those there. So out we go with those. Do you like a bit of Wimbledon, Emily? I do actually. Yeah? Yeah. It's amazing, like nobody watches tennis all year and then Wimbledon comes yeah. on and everyone's glued to it, aren't they? It's so true. We're all like it, well, we all do it. My mum really enjoys watching it, so I sat down right. and watched it with her. I, like, I love playing I, tennis. Yeah, I find it quite a fascinating sport to watch. It's one of those sports, though, isn't it, that you have to play somebody as good as you, otherwise the ball never comes back. Yeah. A bit like that with table tennis. 
Tom loves table tennis. Right, so we're going to chop the cucumber up into little pieces. So matchsticks first. And because we've removed the seeds, this will stay nice and crunchy for a bit longer. Whereas if you put all the seeds in and just chop the cucumber up, it would go incredibly watery. And just everything's just very, very wet. And it just it won't be very pleasant to eat. So no matter what salsas you're making, you want to try and get all the water out potentially. So group them all together. So I'm using the 20 centimetre cook's knife here from uh, Masterclass. This is the Edge Keeper. If you scan the QR code along the bottom, it will take you straight to our online shop. So if you see any of the equipment that I'm using here and you think, I need that for my kitchen, scan the QR code. It'll take you straight to Cook, Serve and Enjoy. Have a cruise around. You'll find some amazing equipment there. Right, so we'll chop this last bit as well. Now, if you have any questions at all, please do post them in the comments below. I will try and answer them as best I can. It's always good to sit and have a bit of a chat with you all while we're watching the show, which is nice. So, in with our cucumber. Oh, look at that, making a mess today. Right, now I like a little bit of chilli in my salsa, it is optional, entirely up to you. It doesn't have to have it in if you don't like it. But I think that little bit of warmth really works well for me. So, one red chilli, remove the seeds and the pith, chop them into matchsticks, and then turn them the other way, and chop them the other way. There we go. Not a lot of chilli, just a little bit, just to give it a bit of warmth. Now, I've got some San Misano tomatoes. So these are lovely plum tomatoes. Really, really nice. This time of year is when tomatoes are lovely. Okay, here in the UK. But again, same as rules apply for the cucumber, is I'm gonna get rid of the seeds because there's still quite a bit of water in these and it's just gonna dilute that impact Take the tomato, it's cut into quarters, and then just push the knife along and remove the seed. Okay, and now we've just got beautiful flesh from the tomato. And that, that goes for a lot of things. You know, if you wanted a really simple, light pasta dish, just buy these lovely, sweet San Misanos, remove the, um, the seeds and the pith and dice them up. Clove of garlic, splash of olive oil, fresh basil, beautiful. You can't Delicious. Get a hold of them type of tomatoes. Yeah. You, you just you can, obviously remove the seeds from. Yeah, you don't have to. I mean, I've got cherry tomatoes, maybe, and uh, you know something nice and sweet. Mm. It's it's like this time of year. I love this time of year because this is when things come into the shops that should be there. In the UK, we're notorious for having everything imported all year long: strawberries, tomatoes, you name it. And actually, you kind of need to wait. You know, tomatoes in the summer. Strawberries in the summer, they're just so much nicer. So we're gonna chop them again, dice them all up. And this is gonna, this is just like a little addition. Obviously you don't get this in pins, but because I wanted to make a salsa that actually works, I wanted to add the tomatoes in because the tomatoes will work really well with everything else. But you can see how quickly it's done. I mean, that's two tomatoes. There we go. Done. Right. Let's grab those, pop those in. There we go. Right. How much you've made, how much would that carry? How many people would that serve? Oh, this is going to serve everyone. I mean, um, we're making, how many bao buns have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight there. There's going to be easily enough for every bad bun and then a little bit left over as well, maybe for some nachos later or something. So, tomatoes. Now, what do you think of this? This is my strawberry huller. All right, so if you, if you have a bit of trouble getting, rid, getting your strawberries out, all you do is get one of these little bad boys. Look at that. Done. Clever, isn't it? You're not wasting, like... No, exactly. Uh, you know, you, all you do is you open it out, push it in, turn, look. 
you don't lo you don't lose much strawberry at all and when the strawberries are lovely and ripe and sweet and delicious it's so easy to get them out like this so all i'm going to do is i'm just going to get eight or nine out decent sized ones and we're going to chop these up as well okay Yeah. Oh, I've got a big one here. Let's do that one. There you go. Ready? So pop it in, give it a little turn, and there you go. Boom. I reckon as well, you could probably plant that. I wonder if that would turn into a strawberry. I don't know. I might try that. Somebody will probably tell me. It might be the seeds on the outside, I don't know. Yeah, but you could fill the um, little like, cavity that you've created with something, couldn't you? Yeah. Right, so, cut the strawberries. If they're big, you know, cut them into bigger pieces. You want everything into be little tiny pieces, okay? So everything wants to be the same size. So when you taste it, you get that combination of flavors. You don't get any one dominant flavor. And this kind of sweet fruitiness is going to work really, really well with everything else that's gone in there. So if you're randomly watching this in the depths of winter, you need to get your tinned peaches or mangoes out. Um, do exactly the same, but with the mangoes, and it will be equally delicious. We've had it quite a few times with mango and peach, yeah. haven't we? It's a bit of a family favourite in our house. I always make it when we've got the family round and we have yeah. a barbecue. Yeah, we had it last weekend on the barbecue. It was lovely. And it, it just works. The fruitiness is so good. I had a few family members that were sceptical, but soon enjoyed it as soon as I know, it well, yeah. I think it is, like, eating fruit in a salsa is a bit... It comes across as a bit odd, but when yeah. you taste it, it's delicious. Yeah, I think it, it needs to be done right. Yeah. You take time, get everything... You know, you can't chuck everything in a blender. You've got to make this by hand to really enjoy it. Otherwise, it's just going to be a mush. What are you thinking, Carlos, of this one then? Like it. Quiet, quietly sort of think, looking at this one, thinking, yeah, I'm just in the corner, eating. what is he doing? <laughs> I find that you get a good strawberry when it's sweet, but it's still got a bit of a crunch. So you can hear the knife go through it, and it's yeah. a little bit of a crunch to it. Last strawberry. Okay, so strawberries in. We are nearly ready to cook. Right. Okay, so let's recap what I put into this salsa in case any of you have missed it. So, we started with red onions and lime juice, okay? And then we took the cucumbers, we cut them long ways and then into quarters, removed the seeds and then diced them as well. Um, we've added red chili in here. Um, and then we've added uh, Samizano tomatoes, so the lovely plum tomatoes. Again, remove the seeds, dice them up, mix them all together. I mean, look, that just looks like a normal salsa now. So, last ingredient, splash of olive oil in there, and then some fresh mint. So I've nicked this out of the garden, so it's lovely big mint leaves. Mint works really, really well with this. Strawberries like mint, okay? Let's roll that up and then we'll just chop this nice and fine. Just once will do because we don't want to bruise the mint. We want to keep it nice and fresh and just release the flavor. Okay, so there we go. That is our salsa done. Let's just wipe this down and we'll get our halloumi cheese on and I'll talk bao buns. Right, time to cook the halloumi. So, it, this is just halloumi from the supermarket. I'm going to cut it into one centimeter slices. It's important that you dry the halloumi off because often it's backpacked in like a brine. And when you're sort of frying off the cheese, you want it to be a little bit drier so that you get a nice crispy contact on there. So if you just get some kitchen roll. All you need to do is just dab it that's it, that'll do. And I've got a pan on here, non-stick. I'm gonna put oil on the cheese, not in the pan, okay? 
So a little bit of olive oil on there and that's it. And then we just put it straight down in. Hot pan. Cook it on the barbecue if you prefer. That's just as easy. Very popular halloumi on the barbecue these days. You don't really need to do too much with this cheese. We just need to cook it on one side till it's golden and crispy and then on the other side till it's exactly the same. Now, talk to you about bao buns. Now, bao buns are like a steamed Asian bread. Okay, you can get them in lots of supermarkets now. They are really easy to get hold of. If you are lucky enough to have a Chinese supermarket near you, you will get them in there, normally in the freezer section. Um, if you have neither, Follow the link below and I will write you a recipe on how to make them. But they're very, very simple. They're um, made with bread dough. They've got a little bit of baking powder in the bread dough. It makes it slightly different. You roll them out, you cut them, you brush them with half with a piece of oil, a bit of oil, fold them over and then you steam them rather than bake them. So they are, they might seem a bit daunting, but they are pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it. Then you just steam them until they're lovely and soft and light. They are delicious. My kids absolutely love these. So we'll put those on there and we'll get those steaming. This is kind of like a good pocket for flavour, aren't they? Oh, they're just, they're like, like tacos are. They're just great for carrying good flavours. Yeah. Right, let's turn these over. You can see, because I haven't messed about with them and I dried them off, they've got a nice bit of colour on them. Oh, yeah. Looking good. Now, if you are gluten-free, just have them without the bao buns, all right? You don't have to have the buns with it. It's absolutely fine. Have it as a beautiful salad. Have the halloumi, have the salsa, or you could use, I think, can gluten-free have, people have corn tortillas? Yeah, corn, yeah, corn tortillas. So you could have corn, yeah. you could have tacos if you wanted. That's absolutely fine. We've done something similar about putting halloumi in tacos, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, we've done halloumi tacos before, yeah. Right, that is almost done. So, Emily, are we going to try the salsa on its own up first? Yeah. Yeah, you want to have a try? I've obviously had the mango, but I'm changed to the strawberry. All right, let's make sure we get a bit of strawberry in there for you. There we go. Have a little taste. Carlos, are you going to have a go? Yeah, why not? Yeah? There you go. Thank you very much. See what you think of that, and then we'll try them in the bow buns. Now, these have steamed. What do you think? Interesting. Mm. Yeah? So, the bow buns, where they've been folded, they just open out really, really easily, okay? So, we'll get some tongs. Actually, before I serve these up, we ought to have a competition this week, haven't we? So, if you want to enter a competition to win some amazing masterclass bakeware, Carlos is going to throw on image over the top of me now with some amazing products. Make sure you like, share and comment about this video. And the reason why I ask you to do that, it helps share the program further afield and more people get to know the program, which really helps us and my sponsors masterclass and you guys get the opportunity to win some amazing bakeware. Now, I will message you direct on Facebook Messenger and after I've drawn out a random winner, so everything is private, we contact you, send us your address, and we will post you out some amazing bakeware. Back to buns. Right, we've got our bow buns, so if you see, they're sort of folded like little pockets, perfect for that lovely piece of halloumi cheese. So there we go, we pop that in there, and then a nice big spoonful of this amazing salsa. Such a good party food, this. People will absolutely love it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill them all and I'm gonna finish them with just a little drizzle of honey because the sweetness of the honey works so well with the halloumi cheese. Okay, so pop that in there. See, you want it in one of these now, aren't you? Yeah, they look so colorful and summery. Yeah, great street food, like perfect for barbecues this, absolutely perfect. Get these bow buns. I've even seen them, actually. You can get kits uh, on Amazon and things like that on how to make them at home. They're really easy. I've got a friend, Jeremy Pang, who's got like a bow bun kit oh, cool. where you buy the, the flour and everything and you can just make them. They're super easy to make. But, you know, the, I have noticed them lots more now in the supermarkets. 
they've become very popular um, in the UK. I mean, you know, overseas, I'm sure there's, they've probably been about for ages. But you, the possibilities are endless of what you can put in these. You don't have to put cheese in. I've done, I've done fish bao buns. I've done some Korean chicken ones. The Korean chicken ones. Kids absolutely love them. Um, you can go to Wagamama's and they do amazing ones there. Oh, do give, they? give them a little name check. I'm sure, they don't need my name check, but <laughs> they are good. You're going, aren't you, to Wagamama's? Yeah, I think so. You need to try the bao buns. Okay. You need to try everything, in fact. Right, last one, and then we're going to finish them just with that little bit of honey. So there you go. I mean, look how beautiful do they look. Oh, nice. Yeah? You take those to the table, then I've got just a little bit of honey, and it is only a little bit you need. Tiny little bit like that. Just that little trickle, or you could use maple syrup if you wanted to. Absolutely fine, but I think it just makes the difference. But there you go. That is how to make bao buns with halloumi and a strawberry pims salsa. Time for another recipe using strawberries. Now, I thought I would create a delicious drink. Okay, I found this lovely sparkling rosé. Um, we're going to freeze the rosé and we're going to blend it up with strawberries to make what I would call a frappe, like a slushy type drink. Um, we're going to use strawberries, basil, and rosé wine. So, first thing we need to do is get our rosé in and frozen. Now, I've already frozen some, which is handy. Um, so, let's just get this open. Now, I've got these spherical, spherical? Yeah. Spherical, yeah. Round. Oh. Ice cube moulds, all right? And these are Colourworks. And if you scan the QR code below, it'll take you straight to the shop and you can buy your own if you want to. Okay? So, I'm going to pour it in a jug first because it's just a little bit easier. Oops. Making a mess. <laughs> okay, so what you do is you put these on top and you fill them through the hole and they will just freeze. So they're really cool ice cube um, trays anyway but what you can do is you can put fill them up with fruit juice or anything cocktails you name it put a stick in there and you've got a cocktail ice lolly like the sound of that don't yeah. you so i'm going to fill these i'll just fill one so pour it in you'll have to bear with me this i'm a man it takes a lot of concentration this it's easier peeling apples on camera than this. I don't know when it's going to... Oh, there we go, you see. The problem is you don't know when it's going to fill, but it's not a big problem. So let's get those in. So, you get the idea. Stop laughing, Emily. <laughs> Otherwise, you're getting just strawberries. No. Right, there we go. You get the idea. Pop them in the freezer overnight and then you have got your ice cubes. Now, let's put these to one side, have a quick wipe and I will get the frozen ones out in a second. So, thought we'd blend it up, okay? I'm going to use this um, hand chopper because you could just chuck it in a food processor if you want to, you could blend it up, no problem at all. But I, I don't want it to kind of, you have to be careful that it doesn't blend it too much too quickly. And I think with an electric blender, it runs the risk of doing that. So I'm just going to get my fresh strawberries. See, these, when they're added, not frozen, to the frozen wine, it's going to instantly make that lovely kind of slushy texture. So let's get everything in that we need first. So strawberries in. This sounds like a kind of Emily weekend drink, this one. Absolutely. In the hot tub, watching the tennis. Yep. Yeah. It's not what I'm making this weekend. Halloumi bao buns with yeah. strawberry salsa and strawberry and rosé wine frappes. Absolutely. That's you. No work coming from you this weekend, is there? Nope. I'll <laughs> Right, this should do. So, in with our strawberries. Now, I'm going to just take one basil leaf. Strawberry and basil as a flavour combination works really well, okay? 
but you don't want to put too much in. So we're going to garnish the drink at the end with some basil leaf and some berries. That's it. Right, let's get the frozen rosé wine. Okay, so I froze all my ice cubes and I popped them into these uh, silicon bags. These are really good. So in terms of single-use plastic, these can help you kind of remove that. Um, they're really good. They're washable. They seal up and I can keep. Can you see in there, Emily? Uh, Look. Oh, yeah. Oh, little crystals. Yeah. But better because they're wine. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can make plenty of these. So if in your house you ever have some wine left over, which you haven't drunk, this is the perfect way to deal with it. Some houses never have wine left over, <laughs> but some do. So, there we go. Put that to one side, that can go back in the freezer. Now, let's see if we can get this on. Give it a little turn. Right, now the good thing about this is it's kind of proper old school, this. It works by a piece of string. So we're gonna blend it up like so. It's a cross between a pudding and a drink, this. Yeah. It could almost be. Now, I reckon it's broken down a little bit. Oh yeah, look at that. We could probably add some more wine. Yeah. Couldn't we? Nothing wrong with adding more wine. Add a little bit more wine. There we go. This looks good. See, when I come up with these ideas, Emily, and I send you these random text messages, I've got a great idea for strawberries. <laughs> Some of them are keepers. There we go. Done. Look at that. All done. And now we have our lovely drink. Here you go, Emily. Have a try of that. See what you think. Carlos is in the wings today as well. We better give him a little bit as well. He likes a pink drink, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Right. Let's get our glasses. Okay. Oh. You could completely freeze this if you wanted and have it as like a granata, or a granita as a dessert. But we're going to serve it as a, as a drink. What do you think? Very quiet over there in the edit corner. So in it goes, like so. And we'll get the other one. Now, if you have any questions at all, please do post them in the comments below. And do me a favor, share this video with your friends and family. Let them see what we're up to. It really helps us grow the numbers, which is really important. Um, and scan the QR code along the bottom if you want any of today's recipes, okay? So, I reckon I could probably get that in there. And the beauty of this is, if you've frozen enough wine, you could do round two <laughs> when you need it, couldn't you? And then I thought I would just take a few. I've got some raspberries. It's that time of year where all the summer berries are there. Pop those in. Little basil leaf in there as well. That'll do. On there. Few blueberries. There we go. Pop a basil leaf in. Give it a little scrunch, and that'll release the flavour. Okay, just like that. And if you're feeling really adventurous, you could just add a little bit more wine there if you wanted to. Look at that. That is how to make a beautiful rosé wine and strawberry frappe. Perfect for watching Wimbledon. Now, thank you very much for watching today. Really hope you've enjoyed the recipes. Get yourselves into the kitchen, make them, scan the QR code, get the recipes, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>